And that's the story of how I saved Christmas. I thought it's how I save you, how I met your mother. Like Fuck you. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Spyro Two. Hey, we're yeah, we're actually back and doing Spyro Two. So we apologize for the fact that we started Spyro Two, and then immediately went back to Lego Star Wars. Why does this game look so shitty? It doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Look at this. This looks, this looks awful. It's, it's like, what, 900p? Shut up. And now we've learned to swim, so now it's time for basically the first of multiple instances that the, of what the, um, yeah, uh, what started in Spyro, as uh, far as series starting in, in this game, backtracking. Luckily for here, it's only three times you have to do it, unlike five, which has at least four. Four or five. Right. Also, um, in case you're watching this through the um, through the playlist and not like in the in the order we release our episodes, you're probably wondering um, why am I here all of a sudden? Um, this but is I a have different, a, different... but but I have but I have a more relevant question. What did I miss? Uh, just the first two episodes. Yeah, and what happened in the first two episodes? Uh, you missed Glimmer, you missed Idle Springs, and you missed Colossus. And you missed the first part of our first, of uh, the first homeworld, Summer Forest. Basically, right. we're, cl we're going through the stages and collecting talismans at the end of them. But we get those by basically solving the issue... We also basically collect orbs because Jesus, the loading sorry. screens are lagging. Yeah, that's that's the issue with the Switch version. Luckily, it's just the it's just loading screens. There's nothing you else know, that lags in the Switch version, which it's annoying. But honestly, it's yeah. But it takes it takes away it takes away the charm. That's what it's all about, the charm. Granted, that's why I basically turned. I turned on. Well, hell, I turned on the classic, um, the classic uh, music because I prefer the original tracks for Spyro, and I also put turned on the um, low res model for Spyro, which is the cheat code, which honestly is my favorite cheat, and I don't understand why why they didn't do that for Crash and the Insane Trilogy. Because I want to sell the Insane Trilogy. They also wanted to sell this. Well, apparently not as much as the Crash Trilogy. Uh, it, is, it, it looks awful. Why do people? Why would people play this? Sorry, when I when I'm on my third beer, my inner Jim Ryan comes forth. Uh, yeah, so basically, you actually had had to return to here. To not only get all the I don't gems, have to do anything. Shut the fuck up. To return to get all the gems and to actually get this last orb. Which is actually made up of three different challenges. God, I remember remember when I actually had Lael doing this and she kinda took a little bit of a while. <laughs> Cause she didn't she didn't fully understand the real cheat for this, which is just Hitting the four, um, the, hitting them in the in a square, not basically one by one. Yeah, the challenges aren't well, that. To, to be fair, it, it it does look like one of those kind of challenges where if you play the game before, yeah, you're gonna have yeah, to oh, try, true, but true. If you if you if you if you're just playing it for the, for the first time and it, it's it's gonna take a while. It it seems like one of those kind of puzzles. Yeah, no, nah, I get that. I, I don't mean it like that, but I would thought she would have figured it out a lot faster. I'm not. Co much love to Lael. Much love to Lael. She is a terrific friend. Yeah, yeah. Let us let, give her let's give her a shout out in the description below. Yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll do that. Anyway, here you need to feed basically this tiki head ten fish. It this is really just one of the most mindless and mindlessly numbing mini games in this game. And and st and you still missed. Yeah, and now <laughs> you have to wait. 
Because that's because then all of the red fish start coming when I'm one away. Wait, what's wrong with red fish? Um, they don't. They'll have cause them to spit up. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know Tiki heads could could be racist against fish. <laughs> nah, he's more of a picky eater. <laughs> There's another red fish. <laughs> I like how I like how you can see that this tiki head, how for for whatever reason it has one one of those like dangly uh, thingies it, behind its uh, at its throat. I I don't know the English name for it. Anyway, yeah. For this last one, you actually have to go right right to the very end of the stage. So it's weird that basically the first one, is, first two are right at the beginning, and the last one is right at the end. I can never understand what the what this one is. So basically, the unless, yeah, even even someone who knows the game inside and out, I still have trouble with this one because I there's no real reasoning for some of these. There's no real reasoning for some of these. It's maybe it's a maybe maybe it's the order of nightly stages. Maybe, maybe, but I think they would have had at least have given you a hint for that. Yeah, and to to be fair, that would be pretty far fetched when you take into consideration that a seven year old is supposed to play this game as well as a twenty year old. <laughs> but hey, now we're done with the backtracking. Period or for now? For swimming. For swimming. Alright. There's still two other things to learn in the other two worlds. Because there are three worlds. What happens if you jump into the water before you learn to swim? Spiral just basically skims the, skims the water. Okay, so it, it's not it's not like uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 or Vice City where your character just Dies? Yeah, no. Sp Spiral will just skim the water, like, wa skim the water. Alright. Although, if it if it's unswimmable, though. If it's unswimmable, then he'll take damage. But they don't really do yeah. much of the unswimmable water. Every kind the water's kind of basically... Now, eh. now, basically, when you have basically bad um, liquids, it's just lava or acid or something. Because the speedway for the... But, wait, wait, hang on. Spyro is a dragon. Yeah. Shouldn't that mean he's, like, immune to hotness? No. Because there are also el other elemental dragons. Right. Something that the, um... That the Legend series introduces to us. As does Enter the Dragonfly. Yeah, I, I don't want to think about entering a dragonfly, to be honest. I, I mean, too many things, but that I ain't. <laughs> Hi, Hunter. Wait, Hunter? And yes, for, for some strange reason, just for this world, there is a backtracking thing. They don't do this for the third ability in the second world. They do it for the set for the ability for climbing in the first world. I don't understand why they even chose to do that. Holy fuck, Hunter is hot. <laughs> and he's voiced by everyone's favorite pancake loving dumbass. You're carrying have activated the special portal. I don't think that many people like um, Adachi. No, oh, oh god, no, people love Akechi. People love Akechi. Oh, wait, Akechi. What? This is why you shouldn't name your character similarly. I mean, it's like. Wait, and who, who, then who's the. Who are you referring to? Akechi. I was. Hunter's voice actor in the Reignited Trilogy is Robbie Draymond. Huh. Who also voices the catchy in Persona 5. 
Hence why I said everyone's favorite pancake loving idiot. Yeah, I, I don't see how people can sympathize with like a serial a serial killer, but Yeah, it's it, it's really weird. But, but, but honestly, but I do but I, I I mean I, I mean I say that but then I, I realize we we just spend like a couple of um couple of sessions 19 to be exact on um on a franchise where basically all the all the trouble in the universe are called by a horny serial killer so he's okay he's not a serial killer yeah. he's a child killer a serial child killer <laughs> that that just make doesn't make any sense dude <laughs> Nina does half of the plot points in Star Wars, but guess what? Here we are. True. <laughs> True. Star Wars can be a real big mess. And it's also why I'm the, I'm the one that's basically going... Well, okay. Kingdom Hearts is what much worse. Kingdom Hearts is much worse. And guess which one I'm playing for the channel. Chain of Memories? Fuck no! Fuck no! What's wrong with Chain of Memories? Fuck Chain of Memories. That's... Chain of Memories is one of the few games that actually will legit make me mad. That That's a wow. game that actually wow. makes that, me that's... mad. Oh, okay, okay, boys. Time to roast you, you in the comments. <laughs> interesting, interesting note. The Electrals in the original version were voiced by Tom Kenny. Literally all of them. So when I actually did the original, um... Uh, hang on, hang on. Is that guy we just talked to, is he voiced by Tom Kenny? I believe that Tom Kenny still voices all the uh, electrols. I we were talking it's over it, so... Because this character really does sound spongebob like Yeah, he does. Head, also, I had this muted the entire time, so... <laughs> time. Oh, well. Another interesting note that one I actually really do love pointing out. Well, it's one of the few things I do love pointing out. The inspiration for Ratchet and Clink actually came from this stage. Orange creature with the robot. So yeah, the big the big orange gear grinders and the robot enemies were actually inspiration for Ratchet and Clink. Yeah, that's a pretty interesting side. That's a pretty interesting note. Yeah, yeah. I you really, know, I. The... You know, every time somebody mentions Ratchet the Clank, I realize that I should probably play the um. Yes. Play, Ra play the Ratchet the Clank games. Yeah, Ratchet the Clank is a really good series. It's also the one that's still alive, out of well, one of the two that's still alive out of all the PS2 mascots. Well, it's quote unquote alive. They recently got a new entry, but good luck trying to make sense of the series continuity when. You cannot play the games. Like I'm, tell I'm telling you, a Ratchet, like a Ratchet and Clank, all in all in one collection, like all all the games running at like 4K, 60 FPS, 120 if you're ambitious on PlayStation 5. I, I mean, yeah. I'll probably pay it. I de I definitely would. Like if you if you got, if you can talk all big about. Like game remakes, then fine, but rem then remake your bloody games. Yeah. Um, we do have apparently that Croc rumor, so that series is coming back. Frankly, yeah, I, would I, I never, like... I, I never really looked into the um into the Croc games. Croc is not bad, but it's heavily flawed. Is it a game of its time? Yes. Oh, oh, big time! It is a game of its time. It is, yeah, considering how a lot of basically, how sometimes a few of the minigames in order to get the little um, creatures you have to rescue can be basically one and done. Right. Like, so then what? So then do, do I put it in the same category as uh, as Gex? Where it, it, it's really a, side, a thing of its time or is it even worse? 
I would kind of put it more in the in around the same thing as original Banjo Kazooie. If you're playing right. on N64, if you're playing on N N64. Because because original N sixty four is not really kind to anyone. <laughs> Considering oh you died well now you lost all the notes. Oh we made a stage that's literally very very easy to die in. A few of them, yeah tough shit. There's a reason why people say, even for newcomers, if you want to get into the Banjo-Kazooie series, you get the Xbox Live Arcade ones. Not the rare uh, replay version? That's the, that's Xbox Live Arcade. Alright. So, yeah. Speaking of Banjo-Kazooie, I actually have started to play uh, Nuts and Bolts recently. Oh god, why that game? Because A, because A, morbid curiosity, B, uh, again, I'm doing the Banjo series, so I might as well play, play that one too. I'm actually, it's honestly not as bad as everyone says it is. It's honestly a really decent game. Not a good Banjo Kazooie game, but it's still a decent game on its own merits, to be honest. Right, because like there are some stuff that basically are pretty damn good. Like, I like some of the jokes are are really really bad. A lot of the jokes are really really bad. Just, I also wouldn't. I would say they're not written for you, perhaps. No, no, they're not. They really are not written for fans of the series. Like, what, what kind of jokes are they? Are they, like, pop culture reference? Are they uh, one of the, one of attitude the, kind? One of the things that starts with, um, that the game starts with is basically the Lord of Games. Yes, that's a character that literally basically starts up the whole thing. Going... We will we will dictate your challenge by collecting as many pointless objects as objects as possible. Right, so it's like the self-aware kind of humor. It, but it's self-aware, it, but it, it feels really it, it, awkward. It, fall, it, it falls flat. Yeah, basically. especially when concerning the quote-unquote collectible challenge is. Hey, here's a line of just basically just pure coins. Right. Yeah, a straight straight line of pure coins. You'll see it when I when we when I rec record that game. It's a lot of them. Yeah, are I'm I'm gonna assume that at this point in time that game is like way down on your priority list. Uh, not really considering how how this is yeah. how considering this is the only game where I'm doing all three games at did all three games at once, mostly because of how much I enjoyed the spiral games. I'm gonna put time I'm gonna separate Well the, well that 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 and you you already had the the trade you you already had the game popped in your system so Yeah. You might so as I'm, well yeah. put the other ones, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, that's probably what I'm gonna do when I'm uh, when I'm recording the um, the crash. crash insane trilogy. Are you gonna go for basically literally every? Okay. Are you gonna go for the gold gem, the gold relic gem? No. Good. That. I'm going for platinum. Please tell me you're joking. I've already did it. God damn it, Edgy. Like, I'm believe, not that insane. Me, I, like, I, look, hot cocoa I, makes me mad. Hot cocoa makes me mad too. Okay. Hot cocoa is hot cocoa is manageable. It's all manageable. Not yeah, on console. Going, not on console anymore. Like, yeah, why are you playing it on console, pleb? 
<laughs> Fuck you. Hell why, why, hell, why are you playing this on, on console? I gave you the Steam version for a reason. After and I recorded these. <laughs> that yeah, might no, be the case. Like you gave but, it to you, me you, after you, recording But you, you can, you can re-record it. If I re-recorded the Spyro games, I'm doing the original PS2 versions. I'm PS1. PS1, shut the fuck up. But yeah, also, an interesting note about um, this mission. Your goal is to basically just put all the energy balls into the generators. But you can't really do that until you kill all ten of the gear grinders. So that's why they have the counter for that. Right. Also, also I, just, I, I, I just briefly looked it up and... Um... I should probably mention that on the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, according to Steam, I've got 108 hours on Damn. record. Damn. Wanna guess why? Platinums. Platinums. I mean, it's like considering the fact that Caddy has a video <laughs> dictating all how bad it is to get platinums in the entire series, I'm not surprised. Well, yeah, but the thing is, with the... I'd say that with the Insane Trilogy is probably the easiest. It's the um, it's the other titles where it really, where they they, they haven't they, they don't really realized what is a good a good time to get. Like a, a lot of times the the platinum relic times were like, um, okay, so take the take the developer times and you, put like twenty five percent above it. Yeah. One of one of those kind of deals. I mean, hell, hell, when I was trying to do the gold relics, I which I quit because basically the fact that they patched hot cocoa on the console version pissed me off so much. They patch hot cocoa on the PC version as well. Oh, really? Well, I mean, okay, it's easier to go back to the non-patched version for a hot cocoa on PC than it is for console. Yeah. That, that, yeah. And I don't. No, but but, I, but I, I, I I recall I recall struggling with uh, hot cocoa as well. But the thing is, um, it it doesn't take too long for you to find a um, a video on what is the appropriate route to take. And at that point, it, it's just a matter of like trying to trying to follow along. True. And I, I know I know a lot of I know a lot of people tend to complain about the about the about the turning of the bike. But I I didn't have any problem with it. But I should also mention that I never played the original PS1 games, so I just took what I had and nice cut. I mean, this is kind of a pain in the ass to get, considering that you have to make a literal, literal U-turn while you're doing a supercharge. That it's that really annoying. The yeah. Are using it to steal our electricity. But yeah, no, for those wondering, what the hell do they mean by patching hot cocoa? Basically, in the original PS1 version, you could very easily get the platinum in the secret stage hot cocoa by utilizing the back of the um, of the jet ski to set off the nitro crates surrounding the um, surrounding the ending. For yeah. those who don't know, uh, for those who know nothing about Crash Bandicoot, a nitro crate is basically a green. Uh, I imagine, imagine, a, imagine like a creeper. Its only existence is to oh, fuck your God day up. Damn it, Edgy. Anyway, well, gotta gotta anyway. make it relevant to the youth somehow. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, nitro crates they're they're green, and if you touch them, they explode. It, yeah, basically the the for some stupid ass reason. Toys for Bob basically fixed that after, in a patch for the game, and it's like, why vicarious did you, visions? Like vicarious, my bad. Toys for Bob was this, and they also uh, they also ported the Insane Trilogy over to Switch. Yeah, but my my point is still, it's like, why did you basically remove the move that homage? Well, probably because due to due to time trials, they wanted to make sure that every. Uh, where, uh, did the time trials in Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy have online functionality? It's basically leaderboard shit. 
Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if it was like an activation decision because uh, oh, we activation. we don't we don't we don't we don't want people to like cheat the leaderboards and whatnot, even though people are obviously cheating, cheating the leaderboards. The leaderboards. <laughs> because they're only human. Yeah. And twat. Yeah. Mostly twat. Yeah. Which is why we'll never see a Spiral 4. Never say never. No, 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 no Activision. We'll probably never see a Spiral 4. Again, never say never. I mean, you, you don't know how how things can turn out. Look, I mean, motherfucker, no, maybe there are two certainties in gaming that I want but will never happen. Spiral 4 and a Xenosaga HD remaster. Our remake. Okay, but okay, but like, but like, ima imagine, right? I imagine if some, if some big dick company were to take over Activision and be like, okay, no listen idea. up, punks, listen up, punks, you're gonna make this game. People want this game, and we want pe what the people Edgy. want because Edgy. it makes us money. Edgy Harada, Tekken's Harada, basically. Asked Namco, hey, think we could do a Xenosaga remaster, remastering or HDFI? And they said that it would not be not be financially good. And it's like, you don't fucking know that, motherfuckers. You don't fucking know that. Yeah, but then I but then I think back about that about that historic Twitter moment where somebody asked um asked Namco, Namco, Bandai, or Bandai Namco, I, I don't know which it's one of the two Bandai it is. Bandai Namco. So like, hey, hey, hey can, can we can we get a remake of Tales of Symphonia, I believe? And and they were like, not that one, but then they made a remaster of the game and they quickly posted, yes, that one. Again, never say never. Yeah, well, Tales gets more respect for them than Xenosaga. Granted, the rights to the entire Xeno series are really skewed. The rights are really skewed because you have the because you have basically three different series, owned with the with the Xeno moniker, owned by three different owned by three different companies. Hey, it's not the first time I heard of it. The most common remaster I um, I hear people screaming screaming about is like, hey, can we can we get a uh, Jet Set Radio Future and. At this point, I really would love to see like a Jet Set Radio remixed collection or a, a whole okay. ass new uh, Jet Set Radio title. Absolutely I haven't played. A I haven't played. Read. I haven't played Future myself, but I did. Um, I did listen a bit to the to the soundtrack on Apple Music, and I will say it's funky as shit. Oh yeah, but yeah. The, Hideki but, but Nakaguma but, but, is damn good. Yeah, but but then here's the thing I'm wondering: like the most the primary excuse people are giving for the lack of a, a Jesuit Radio Future uh, remake is that, oh yeah, the music license is really difficult to like manage because there's a, a whole bunch of different uh, parties involved. To which I to which I ask, okay, that sounds pretty nice now, but then why am I able to listen to the soundtrack on stream platforms? That is true. Turtles. But yeah, sometimes companies just. Hi, Spyro. It's a good thing you're. Yeah. Like it, it, it's it's really difficult to tell nowadays. You know, sometimes it, you wonder if it if it's if they're not re-releasing their old shit because they they can't or because they won't. Yeah. Because there are some companies out there who are probably definitely down to like release some some of their old shit. Like yeah. I rem I remember how um, how people were basically um, when people were basically praising uh, Sony for bringing their games over to PC and well that was something that was unheard of at yeah. the, at the time and yeah. well nowadays. Nowadays, it's still kind of unheard of. I mean, but the sure, but they, they're they, completely they, they put inferior the... ports. What do you mean inferior? What? Like I'm like, what? I I don't play them play some of the ones myself, but but I have heard that some of them aren't doing that good on PC. 
Of course, not they doing also that could... good as at, not doing that good as in not getting performance so good or performance. Not... Well, I can tell you, I played the PC version of uh, Days Gone, and yes, I know. My cousin gave it to me. I, for some reason, had it on my wish list. So bear with me. But yeah, the, the game performed pretty well, and I well, got I mean, six years. I, I got one hundred. I got one hundred. I got one twenty FPS, no problem. After patches, they are, but at the start, yeah, no. Yeah, but nothing is perfect at the start. True, because we do have basically people bitching about how laggy the um, the um, the Ifrit versus Phoenix fight in Final Fantasy 16 is in the cutscene. Yeah, but here's a question for you: like, if you if you say that a game is like laggy. If you say that the game's performance is bad, are you saying that with the context of your average your average gamer who um, who doesn't really have an eye for it, or or are you talking about it from the from the context of Digital Foundry, who has like a whole bunch of uh, tech in house to uh, measure frame rates, or are you talking about the PC elitists who? Low casket because their game is being rendered at 234 FPS instead of the 240 FPS their monitor is. I use my for. eyes, Edgy. Right, can't say I've heard that one before. No, no. It's like, there, there's some people who go, oh, gee, some, gee, this game has frame issues. I'll look at the game and it's like, it, it, unless if it's very noticeable. I don't really notice notice the uh, drop frames very easily. L like I said, it's like there, there's the um, there's the loading screens here that are very noticeable. The carnival on the PS2 version, and ver uh, PS2 for PS4 version of Bully is noticeable. Yeah, that one um, that one Chester keeps telling me about. Yeah, it's it's really noticeable. It is incredibly noticeable. So it's like I don't. I think it's mostly because I did grow up with the with the N six in the N sixty four era PS one era, so I notice it. But unless if it's very easily noticeable, yeah, we just kind of breeze right through this the this episode, not even speaking about this level. Yeah, it's kind of a glorified escort mission, but luckily the escorts are immortal. So you don't really need to worry about them. <laughs> That's good. But yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna be perfectly honest. If if I if I put myself at like but between the PC elitist and the digital foundry and the regular regular kind of gamer, I I would be more of like on a digital foundry level. I I do have a FPS counter enabled, but most of the time, if if I get if on my PC I get above uh, 60 frames per second, it, it's fine by me. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I've I, I've always felt like anything above like 75 um, FPS, like going from 60 to 75, that's a noticeable uh, that's a noticeable difference. But between 75 and 120, like you still notice it. But the the perceived smoothness smoothness the the, the difference in it. Is significantly lower, and I, Maybe you could break open the boxes. I still feel like in in this day and age where consoles talk all much about having certain games work at 120 fps, it, it's all marketing stuff. Like, yeah, it, it looks smoother, but do we need it? No. If we just if we just focus on making everything everything run at 60 fps, that's fine by me. But. Aside from that, I'm I'm not going to like bitch out because oh no, I lost five FPS out of 120. Yeah. But then I I say that while I have um a 165 hertz monitor. In fact, I have two of them. Yeah, of course you do. But nah, I I set them to I set them to 120 FPS, and that's because. 60 FPS on a 120 Hz monitor looks uh, pretty decent, but that's also because uh, 60 is a dividable of 
120. Which is one thing I do find neat about um, about certain games on the on the PlayStation 5. If you play them uh, while you have a 120 hertz display enabled, if you put it on performance on fidelity mode, where it basically um, it basically prioritizes graphics um, in certain titles, notably in Sonic titles, and I also believe the Uncharted uh, Legacy of Thieves uh, collection. If you have a 120 hertz um, or 120 fps uh, display, and you set it to uh, graphical fidelity, it actually plays at 40 fps instead of 30, which I find pretty neat. Hmm, interesting. And yes, this is, mission is one of the reasons why I'm not playing. I didn't play with Super Flame on. <laughs> Because it completely negates how annoying it is. So it makes the mission less annoying. Yeah. Isn't that... Isn't that the reason to play this with the Super Flame enabled? It is, but honestly, it also takes... It also takes away a lot of the... A lot of other challenge for the game, too. Yeah, but like, you already did it. You You don't have anything to prove anymore. Yeah, but I'm still recording without the damn cheat. Hello, young one. There's a chef up at the top of this ladder who wants to right. make soup out of our turtles. Maybe you could climb up I'll do. I'll there. probably do it. Do it on. Um, probably do it for Spyro 2 for for the PS1 version. If I um, when I record that. Just to show how, and, and I also do go back, go back to a later mission just to show how, um, how much super, super flame, infinite super flame just breaks the game in half. And yes, that it is a bit of anger and fuck, and anger and rage, fuck you game, esque, for it. it. It is a little bit of that. <laughs> Because wow, right. that whole thing is really awful when when you do it normally. My God, it it sucks. No doubt about it. <laughs> 